Nothing in my sailing life has inspired as much excitement or as much fear as the idea of sailing across an ocean. Thousands of miles from land, days or even weeks from civilization, completely exposed to the fury and grace of Mother Nature. When the journey is too long for even the best weather forecasts and the distance too great for outside help, an ocean crossing seems like sailing into a world where anything can happen. I'm just kind of trying to soak in all this goodness for now. And you have no one but yourselves to rely on. Boom, we got this. <laughs> now that we've finally left Bermuda, to set sail on our first ever ocean crossing. Bye guys! We feel like the year that we just spent preparing the boat for this journey was time well spent. And although we're bound to run into bad weather, for now, we've got calm winds and blue skies on the horizon, and we're ready to leave our pre-departure nerves behind us and to settle into the ebb and flow of life on board. All right, doing seven knots out of the channel, Steve. The adventure now begins! Woo, let's do this, Attica! I think we have a new Chief Morale officer on board. <laughs> okay, so what you got there, bud? Got half of a tablet of bonding for the captain. We've decided to actually take some seasickness medication this time. Just a little bit. I took a half of a half. When I take bonding, even though it's supposed to be non-drowsy, my body is so weak that like I will pass out for like 12 to 24 hours at a time. If you can't sleep, then you get like super grumpy. That's the thing, yeah. If I'm on watch and I have to do stuff, I'm just in a terrible mood. Whereas when I'm seasick, I'm not like angry at the world. I'm just kind of like, oh, this really sucks. Don't feel good. <laughs> So bad. <laughs> Looks like you and Oso are back in the swing of things. Yeah, I'm ready for a nap. I think we're all kind of feeling that, you know? The motion is sort of getting us all into a very sleepy mode. <laughs> so you want to talk wash schedules, bud? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Our plan originally was to do three on, nine off. In some ways it's cool because you can really settle into a sleep routine, but in some ways it sucks if you're that person that has the like, the one to four watch or whatever. And so one way that we can deal with that is having a dog watch where like the five to eight gets split into two watches and it's like five to 6.30 and then 6.30 to eight. And then that will introduce like that, just a three hour change every day. I kind of like the simplicity of just doing, you know, three on, nine off, even if it means like having that real crappy watch. Cause then again, like your body's gonna get used to it for two weeks. Okay, so that's one, one vote for one vote for static watches. What do you say, Steve? I'm pro the dog, I think. What do you think there? I think we all know Debbie that Downer. I'm just going with the flow and whatever <laughs> is clever is fine by yeah. me. Well, I think I'll be a tiebreaker and say I want to try the dog watch. It's obvious that it's hard figuring out how the dog watch is going to work, but I really want to do it just because of the historical element. Because back in the day, you'd have like an entire watch team of like 12 people and the dog watch made sure you didn't ever get stuck in a rut. So Jen, you are a sailor. You have sailed, but you're not, you know, super experienced with like being the one person on watch. Is that right? I'm not at all experienced with being the one person on watch. I really want to learn as much about all this and let it all soak in and be a sponge. And even though I am a little hesitant, not completely comfortable and confident, not, I'm not even at all comfortable and confident, <laughs> I have confidence that I'll know when I need to get somebody. And, and I would say like, don't be too hard on yourself. Like your responsibility is just to like be a human at the helm who's ready to like identify anything that changes, just be aware of it. And then knowing when to ask Jordan about like, okay, what do I do? Well, and that's kind of one thing that's cool about offshore sailing is like out here, there's like so little yeah. other than like running into another boat, which like if you're paying close enough attention, isn't even gonna get close to happening. Other than that, if the wind picks up really quickly, the boat just heels over and that isn't fun, but it's not dangerous. Like stay on the boat, don't hit anything. You do, you do those two things, you're gonna win. Yeah. You know what I mean? We got this. All right, 
Boom, we got this. <laughs> right, buddy? Boom. Boom. Oh, Team Atticus! <laughs> Oh my God, Steve, that smells so good. We got some zucchini, we've got bell peppers and onions. We're gonna do it up with quinoa mix. And then we've got a Tuscan pork loin that's coming out next. Oh my God, I'm drooling. Hell yeah. Okay, so first night and it's close to a full moon and it's crazy pretty out here, man. It's so cool to be able to see the ocean on such a calm night. We're moving well, the motion is super easy. I mean, I just couldn't have asked for a better beginning to our trip. So I think I'm gonna head down and get some sleep. I'm gonna leave Jen up here for her first night watch on the boat. So, this is my very first dashboard confessional. Tail end of my very first solo watch. So, there's a lot of firsts going on here, and if I can finish this without crying, that will also be a first. There's something pretty magical and powerful and empowering about being at the helm of a ship by yourself. We maintained about 10 knots of wind and about six knots of speed and I hand steered the whole three hours. Being so new to this and the fact that this is the first time ever sailing Atticus, like I don't know her at all. So in order for me to get to know her, I gotta steer her and sail her and, and get to feel her because that's what sailing is to me. It's a feeling. Yeah, I'm just, I'm really thankful. I'm really grateful that they that they chose me to come on this trip knowing that I'm really probably one of the least experienced sailors that they know, but I gotta say we're off to a pretty fantastic start and I'm tired and <laughs> that's awesome because now I can go get a really good night's sleep and start it all over again tomorrow and see what day two brings us. Alright, so beginning of my first watch, it's uh, like 12.30 in the morning. Still really clear skies, you know, everything feels very calm. I feel like maybe the trip from North Carolina to Bermuda like got me into that zone of like really trusting the boat and feeling secure on the boat offshore to be able to like truly be at ease on the boat while we're out here is a neat feeling. First night watch on our Atlantic crossing. It's blowing like nine knots and we're going about six knots. I'm feeling a little bit um, seasick, which is unfortunate, but I think it just has most to do with the pregnancy. It's funny talking to people about seasickness because everyone has a remedy to try sticking one earplug in your ear, wearing the wristbands, trying bonding, and I've tried all of those things. My body's just determined to be seasick, and that's just kind of life, and it makes me appreciate those moments when I'm not seasick, and it really makes me appreciate getting to a nice, calm anchorage. Really beautiful night, super uneventful. I wish every night the passage could be like this. Well, that was a super fast watch. It is the morning of day two. The wind has died down a little bit. We're at like nine knots of wind. Sea condition is so pleasant. It's what you wish for when you're uh, up on deck on watch. I just woke up, I slept over here on the starboard settee tonight. You can see we've got the port settee set up and then the quarter berth is the other berth. So we're all kind of hot bunking. So like every off watch, you have a different bunk. That's a little bit of a bummer, but the really cool thing is I think I just slept more in one stretch than I've ever slept on an off watch while on a sailboat. I got off at three 
and I woke up at like 10.30. Seven and a half hours straight. That is nuts. I don't know that I've ever been this happy or content in my entire life. <laughs> I may great. not have any idea of what I'm doing, but I was meant to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Man, this is some beautiful sailing. I'm never gonna look at eight knots on a weather forecast the same again. Like, I'm gonna be like, oh, we should go. It's perfect. Yeah. I feel like sailing, and especially offshore sailing, is often a good analogy for life. But right now in particular, because, you know, when things are going like absurdly well, it's almost hard not to just dwell on the fact that like it can only get worse from here. <laughs> you know I mean? It's all gonna go bad. But like at the same time, you know, in a lot of ways, the trick with being happy with your life is like when things are going well, is like really trying to seriously appreciate it, you know, and not take it for granted and not let it like slip through your fingers. Even though there is a slight roll to the ocean, when you look out on the horizon, it's so smooth. It's almost like looking at a fire, like how you can stare into a campfire. It's really mesmerizing. Nice one. <laughs> oh, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Go get it. Oh, nice catch. You ready for some fresh water? Oh! Well, water tanks are full thanks to Jordan running around. Dinner is ready thanks to Steve slaving away in the galley. It looks delicious. And the presentation. I know. <laughs> Magnifique. We got some chicken tenders that we had that were thawing and definitely need to be used that have been hit with turmeric, paprika, salt, pepper, onion powder as well. On a bed of roasted red pepper hummus with sauteed potatoes, garlic, asparagus, and onion. This is incredible, Steve. <laughs> What's going on? There's dolphins right next to the boat. Oh yeah, there he is. A lot of people ask me like, how do you get into this kind of lifestyle? And I'm not gonna lie, there's a huge learning curve. So one thing I always suggest is just try to get out on the open ocean and do a passage just so you can feel what it feels like. You can experience the highs so that you're motivated, but then also you need to experience the lows so you're not going into this thinking it's all, you know, dolphins, rainbows, and sunshine. And one great way to do that is to hop on a offshore sailing charter. One program that we highly recommend is Sail Libra. So back in Guatemala, I was kind of struggling with my confidence with sailing. That's my secret, it's out. I'm not an excellent sailor, even though I live on a boat. I wanted to experience a passage kind of without Jordan to just see what I was made of really. So I signed up for a passage with Sail Libra and we hit some super heavy weather. It's the calm before the storm, <laughs> who's nervous? But it was really cool being on a boat that was well equipped, had an amazing captain, great crew, and I made some lifelong friends. And so Jen, you actually went on a Sail Libra trip as well, right? I did. I was a very, very inexperienced sailor. I'd only been sailing one time in my life. It made me realize what I'm made of and that I can do this. I felt kind of like a badass when yeah. I finished. <laughs> so if you're interested in checking out a sale with Sail Libra, head over to sailLibra.com and check out any of their passages that they have coming up. And if you end up booking a trip with Ryan, you can use the promo code PA Offshore and get an amazing deal. So if you're sitting at home thinking, oh, this could be me, I hope you make that leap because you're gonna be in great hands with Sail Libra. All right, so another very 
bright, moonlit night. The winds are calming down a lot. Like, we're getting down into the like six knot range true right now. But luckily we're hard on the wind and so that's given us just enough apparent wind to keep making some headway. But there is something super magical about just ghosting along out here in the middle of the ocean. It's almost a surreal feeling thinking about how far away from everything we are. You know, when we were in Washington, it was all about like preparing the boat. And then even getting to Bermuda, like there was this sense of anxiety in the back of my head of like, we still have the crossing ahead of us. Right now, I'm just sitting here talking to the camera and like, there is nothing around me for like hundreds of miles in all directions. And that's, <laughs> Like, kind of scary if you want it to be scary, but it's kind of amazing if that's what you want it to be, too. And I know we're going to have stronger winds and bigger waves than this, but there's something about being in it that is so much less daunting than the whole, like, thinking about it in the future. I'm just, I'm really happy right now. Night two, the wind is perfect right now. It's just enough wind to be going like seven knots. Again, it's just been 24 hours of amazing sailing. And having Jenna board kind of makes me think about when I started learning, you know, to live this lifestyle and do night watches. And I had a lot of self-doubt and insecurity. And she does too to some extent. But she just makes up for it by being so optimistic, excited about nature, and just the experience of being out here. I guess what I'm trying to say is I think she's a natural without even knowing it. It's exciting. It's exciting to watch. Oh my gosh, today is the perfect weather. Sounds like winds might pick up this afternoon and then potentially for like 12 hours tomorrow. I'm just kind of trying to soak in all this goodness for now. Me gusta burrito. Oso gusta burrito. <laughs> Spanish is great. <laughs> so then Jen, day three, has your optimism wavered? If I was any better, I couldn't stand it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then Oso, do you want to say anything? No tango burrito. <laughs> so, Desiree, how do you say hello in Portuguese? <laughs> I've been practicing. Como vai is like, how's it going? Like, como estas? Yeah. I think that's how you do it. We'll find out. <laughs> is fully out and it feels like there's a spotlight on the boat. It's kind of crazy. This is night three of like perfect sailing weather. It's feeling a little bit like Groundhog's Day. Didn't we do this yesterday? It is really nice kind of being disconnected from society and not having to worry about projects or grocery shopping or the internet. I'm starting to really settle into the feeling of going with the boat just making slow progress and there's something that is so nice about that because we've been sprinting so hard for so long just dreaming about you know the day we could take Atticus 2 offshore and it's so funny because I feel like as humans we like build these goals in our mind of if only we can get to this goal then we, we will be happy to the point where you're you like bust your butt so much working to that goal that you kind of forget what the goal even means. And so it's nice being here, living our goal, acting on our goal. Yeah, just feeling really at peace. All right, so it's the beginning of day four. So something that like has really been surprising is just how little there is to do 
with regards to being on watch and like sailing the boat. There's very little traffic out here. Like we are fairly outside of most of the major shipping lanes so that there are cargo ships, there are tankers in this vicinity, but very, very few of them. There's no shoals, there's no reef, there's no land out here. So like, we don't have to worry about hitting anything. Every now and then, the wind shifts so much that we have to actually adjust course and then trim the sails. And that's like the only thing we've really had to do for like three days. It's been like just the, the least stressful sailing I think I've ever done in my life. The first couple days of our Atlantic crossing were about as good as we could possibly ask for. Fair winds, calm seas, and blue skies for three straight days felt too good to be true. And in a way, it was. Next week, we begin preparing mentally and physically for a storm that will shake us to our core. There we go. And that reminds us of the cruel indifference of the sea. We'll come face to face with the darker, more violent side of the open ocean. The sail is just like drooping down and see whether we have what it takes to see the boat and ourselves through the storm. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed the episode. I wanted to let you guys know that when we were sailing to Bermuda, we had a bit of a mishap. Basically, we tried to get some really epic drone footage of the boat sailing into Bermuda, and we had this weird error, and like all I saw was a screen on my phone just went all crazy, and then I heard a splash. And long story short, the drone is at the bottom of the ocean now. So if you are at all interested in helping us to get a new drone, then you can head on over to projectatticus.com slash drone, where you'll find everything that you need to know in order to contribute towards getting us back up in the air and making the most awesome aerial footage possible. So thanks guys for watching. I know Desiree's got a couple things she wants to say. Hey guys, before hopping into patron shoutouts, I wanted to give a huge thank you to Carla and Joao from Fayal. You guys helped us out while we were there so much and we just had an amazing time because of you. So thank you so much for being so sweet to us and our little fur baby Oso. I also wanted to take a minute to thank some of our newest patrons. So to our newest bosun level patron, thank you so much, Chad Saxton. And to our newest Yachtmaster level patrons, thank you so much, Larry Fritzlin. Debbie Stocks, Leo Ford, Stephen P. Bailey, and Bill Goldsmith. And finally, to our newest Deccan level patrons, thank you so much. Rick Benedetto, Jeff and Linda Dow, miss you guys. John Hoover, Chris Cassidy, Andrea and Fred Maxey, Drew and Margaret Kiesler, Don Kurtz, Louis W. Reuter, Brian Leith, Daniel Baker, Sean Foster, Bree Engel, Lori Holmes, Michael Manning, Scott Highland, and Dave Chatham. So to all of our newest patrons, as well as the patrons who've been with us from the very beginning, thank you so much for all of your love, support, and encouragement. We couldn't do this without you. Hope you have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week.